All right, welcome to chapter two, unsupervised learning. This chapter will be rather short because we're gonna mainly discuss two algorithms. One is k-means clustering algorithm and the second one is anomaly detection. Um, we dealt with supervised learning in the past 12 sessions or lessons and so what is supervised learning? Well, you give the computer the input and the label which is the output and you train the computer as to transform this input to this output. Yeah? So remember, or just an example, you could have th three points here, two, four, three, six, and four, eight. Yeah? So the first two, the, the two, the three, and the four are your axes, and your labels are four, six, and eight. If you're gonna run um, machine learning training on this, you will find the model and the computer will give you y equals to x. Yeah. Now, if you look at this data here and you look at this model, the fit is perfect. Yeah. In reality, the model will only approximate uh, the, the features and the labels. Yeah. And uh, you will make an error. So we use an iterative process here called gradient descent as to minimize that error. Yeah. So that's supervised learning. In unsupervised learning, you don't have labels or y's. Yeah, you only have x's. For example, x equals 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. And you ask the machine here to bring some structure in that data. And of course, you need to guide the machine in what type of structure you're looking for. There is also what we call semi-supervised learning. And that is basically uh, a situation where you do have a small amount of, of labels and you would try to use it. Yeah? Um, but we will see that in, in a few examples. Let us start with lesson 13 which is anomaly detection. Applications are uh, predict credit card fraud or quality control. There you have pass or no pass. Credit card fraud, you have fraud or no fraud. Most of you will say now, well, that's just a, a binary classifier, right? Which we've seen in, uh, in supervised learning. But there is something special about this data here. That means that the negative class, negative class mean, and let's, let's uh, keep it to credit card transactions, no fraud. So all non-fraudulent transactions will be in the negative class. And the negative class is always a lot larger than the positive class. That is, that is unique about uh, anomaly detection uh, problems. Yeah? For example, our coding exercise will be about uh, detecting credit card fraud. Your ne the negative uh, class samples, we will have roughly 300,000 of them. Whereas in the positive class, we only have 500, roughly 500. Yeah? So this is the main difference between, I would say, anomaly detection and classification. You just don't have enough fraud cases to train your model. All right, so an anomaly, another word for an anomaly is an outlier. And basically, how do we define it? Well, it deviates from what you expect as being normal. Yeah? So that is the, the, the broad definition of an anomaly or an outlier. And I try to, to show this now um, using a Gauss curve here. And here we will try to define uh, an anomaly detection system that is very simple and that's using uh, simple statistics. Yeah? So here you have your Gauss curve, the bell curve, uh, it's known to everybody. And uh, this we call also the PDF, uh, Gauss PDF. PDF is probability density function. Yeah? If you want to understand what it all means, go and take a look at my statistics refresher. 
and you have the mean here in the middle and you have a standard deviation. Standard deviation gives you an idea on how far you are from the mean. How, how broadly is this Gaussian uh, stretched? Yeah? And um, now let us, let us define what we call a z-score. Uh, and a z-score is nothing more than norma uh, the normalized version of this. So basically what, what I want to have is I want to have a mean of 0 and I want to have a standard deviation of 1. So I'm going to take every point here and I'm going to subtract the mean and deviate, uh, divide by the uh, standard deviation. That will give me a z-score. Uh, basically what you do is uh, you create your, your Gaussian here yeah, and you center it around 0 and here you have your standard deviation and this is 1. Exactly the same. Yeah. And you could say for example you have an anomaly if z is yeah, if, if z is larger than 3. That means if you are more than 3 standard deviations from the mean. So I've, I've shown this here with the, the black circles here. This is where you would have an anomaly. This is a very, very simple process. Um, and basically it's so simple that it, it will be difficult to do in, uh, in very complex cases. But at least the intuition is, is uh, easy to understand. Now in reality, when you look at a production process, uh, there is a continuous flow of data. Yeah? So you have actually, here you have your z-score. And you measure your z-score as a function of time. Yeah? This, this stripe line here is your, your average z. Huh? So this is the mean the mean of z or the expected value and you will have your your stuff fluctuate ar around this huh? and here maybe you have something like this huh? and this would be your anomaly yeah there's another there's another challenge in the fact that this is a time series you would need to work with some kind of a, a sliding window huh? sliding window and basically you know take that window with you because you cannot go all the way back all the time to calculate these z-scores yeah? so what you do you take um, the z-score yeah? assume that this is n equals 100 that means that you only take the last 100 points with you so the z-score of the next point is the z-score of the last 100 plus the z-score of point 101 and you divide this by 101. Huh? This, this is what we call a moving average. Now, technically it's a little bit more complicated than that, but this is not the, the purpose of this course. We want to take a look at machine learning techniques uh, to actually uh, solve this problem also in complex cases.